Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Greece invested nearly $6 billion in its military in year 2000 and $8.6 billion in 2009 at the height of the financial crisis it was experiencing. As NATO member countries spent an average of 1.7 percent of their GDP on defense, Greece was at 3.1 percent, almost double. The countries among the world's five biggest arms importers between 2005 and 2009, according to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. Despite its financial crisis experiencing as we speak, Greece is refusing to lower its generous military spending. Why is the topic of our next discussion. For this, I'm being joined by Shear Hever, and as you know, Shear is a economic researcher at the Alternative Information Center, a Palestinian-Israeli organization active in Jerusalem and be it sure. Thank you so much for joining me today, Shear. Thanks for having me, Charmaine. So, Shir, uh, what's really going on here? Uh, Greece is, is in a deep economic uh, crisis and a, and a debt crisis. It's unable to pay back its loans, and it needs to borrow more and more. Yet uh, the military purchasing is continuing to grow in Greece. Why is this happening? Well, uh, we would expect Greece, uh, in light of the crisis, to uh, start the cuts first place in the defense budget, because Greece uh, actually doesn't uh, have enemies and has no need for a large army at all. Um, so it's very surprising uh, at first glance that uh, Greece is spending so much on security uh, and on the military. But in fact, uh, we have to remember what kind of role is, uh, is Greece playing uh, within the European politics and what kind of influence is also wielded by Germany uh, and, and other big players in Europe. Uh, and uh, they see Greece not only uh, uh, within its uh, context uh, in, the, in the economic a crisis and, and the debt crisis, which is a, an overall European crisis and not specifically related to Greece, but also within the context of Greece being a, a country through which many asylum seekers and refugees are trying uh, to gain entry into Europe because they're escaping from civil war, genocide, and mass famine. Uh, in uh, the Middle East and in uh, uh, Africa. I can reinforce that uh, position by uh, the research and work we did on the ground while we were just there a couple of weeks ago, where we were at a refugee camp, and it was clear that uh, through the Mediterranean, number of uh, apparently over 100,000 refugees have already landed in Greece in the past year. And, uh, but their destination is not Greece. They want to move on to other European countries. And Germany was actually identified as one of the destinations among several of Afghan refugees that we were speaking to. Um, so it makes sense that Germany is, uh, is cautious and wants uh, Greece to play this role. Uh, but why is Greece playing that role? Yeah. Uh, well, I think uh, um, Greece is. Uh, um, it, it has also an in internal political reasons uh, to try to keep uh, asylum seekers from entering Greece, and I think it's also uh, one of the negotiating chips on the table where very fierce negotiations are still taking place now uh, with Greece uh, uh, and and the rest of the European Union, and and uh, it's uh, still a, a very non generous when it comes to. Uh, um, giving Greece the, the or, or allowing Greece to, to use the tools that Greece needs in order to recover from the crisis. Um, but it, it is surprisingly generous when it comes to uh, fi helping Greece finance prisons, uh, um, detention facilities for the asylum seekers, just to keep them in Greece rather than allow them to continue uh, uh, deeper into Europe. Um, I think what is extremely worrying is this idea of the Greek government and, and senior members of the uh, Greece uh, uh, military and police that uh, have decided to uh, adopt the kind of policy or, or the kind of uh, strategies in uh, um, trying to prevent asylum seekers from entering uh, uh, and to adopt these policies from Israel. And that's why uh, over the last year there has been uh, there have been negotiations about purchasing drones. Uh, Israeli military drones that would uh, be used by Greece in order to spot approaching uh, uh, vessels of, of asylum seekers 
uh, and uh, also a, a police training of, of, poli of, of the Greece police inside Israel, where they would be trained in uh, basically um, treating civilians, and, and in this case we're talking about uh, um, civilians in, in great je jeopardy, as if they were a security threat. This is how the Israeli uh, training centers teach uh, various forms of uh, police organizations and, and military organizations to treat civilians as security threats. We see what happened in, uh, in uh, Ferguson and in Baltimore when uh, U.S. police officers have uh, utilized this kind of training on African Americans. Uh, and uh, Greece is now uh, spending a lot of money uh, on these projects with Israeli companies. Uh, now. And it's not, it's not uh, uh, first of all, um, it, it's violating all kinds of international uh, refugee um, safe haven um, regulations when it comes to the way in which the migrants are being treated. We were actually witness to it, police, you know, over arching their uh, responsibilities, the security responsibilities, and not really treating them as, uh, as you say, civilians. Um, now, the other component of this uh, is that some of that equipment is also being used uh, on the ground against protesters and people who are at uh, Syntagma Square, uh, and these are people that uh, Alexis Tsipras used to actually march with, and now that he is in uh, Parliament, the uh, you know continuation of how the police is treating the protesters and the over-militarization of the policing that is going on in Athens, um, I, I think cannot be at this point um, curtailed or rolled back, because there are uh, the police is clearly, um, uh, what, you know, one institution that is stretching their powers over and beyond uh, what's necessary, both in terms of the uh, refugees and the c refugee crisis, as well as policing in the country. Now, why is it that um, that these purchases that we are seeing happening um, uh, being prioritized in, from your point of view? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. And I think uh, uh, this is exactly uh, how the, the issue of, of the Palestinian struggle for freedom becomes a global issue. And people in Greece uh, who have protested, actually there was a very large, um, and, and there still is a very large movement in Greece uh, in solidarity with Palestinian freedom. They have expressed their solidarity with Palestinians uh, who have been attacked by these very, very same kind of weapons which are now used to repress demonstrations in Athens and in other places in Greece. Uh, and the connection cannot be denied anymore. Uh, but it's uh, um, the question about whether these technologies themselves, the ones that are used uh, to brutally uh, repress demonstrations, to cause uh, bodily harm to uh, protesters, are these things inherently evil or is it just the way that they are being used? That may be a, a very interesting philosophical question. What is, however, a very clear legal question is whether it is allowed to purchase a product that has been uh, tested on human beings without their consent. And even if we're, we were uh, talking about things like li life-saving saving medicine, this is, of course, not life-saving sa medicines, these are weapons. But even if it was life-saving medicine, it's simply illegal to buy a product that has been tested on human subjects without their consent. And the Israeli companies especially Israeli air, uh, aerospace uh, industries, that's uh, IAI, this is uh, the, the biggest Israeli uh, um, military company, the one which has been selected by the Greek government to provide it with drones, has in fact tested these drones on unwilling Palestinian civilians in the West Bank and in the Gaza Strip. Now, these same drones are to be used against uh, re uh, refugees, asylum seekers, uh, approaching the Greek borders, and on Greek civilians as well, on, on Greek citizens who are protesting government policy. Uh, and uh, and I, I think a very strong case can be made that the Greek government should not be allowed to purchase these products because uh, they have been illegally tested. And that it cannot afford to do so, given the current debt crisis that they're in. Um, Shia Harai, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Sharmini. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.